Praise the Lord. Whilst you're still remaining standing, let's pray. Father, again, we, we want to thank you for yet this opportunity as we continue in this second service. May your grace continue to pour. May your love, may your spirit minister to us through this uh, human vessel. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Quickly go with me as I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord to uh, Colossians chapter 2. That's where we've been uh, uh, speaking from. And um, I'm just continuing from the morning service. Um, I'm told this is a... This is the, 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 the group that is alive in terms, of the, in terms of the family service. The other one, I see, yeah, even uh, the number has gone up a little bit because uh, the other group was a little bit sleepy, and I don't expect this one to be sleepy. Praise the Lord. As pastor has introduced me, I'm Pastor Chris. I, I, I love being called Pastor Chris rather than the other one. Um, uh, I'm Pastor Chris. Um, we were joking um, on Friday uh, as he was introducing me. He said, this is Pastor Chris. And then um, um, he said, not, not Oyakilom. Then I said to him, no, not the pastor of the white suit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for the word of the Lord? Thank you again. This is a grand opportunity for us uh, to be part of uh, Cornerstone assembly and we have um, um, uh, put ourselves forth as offering ourselves to partner with Cornerstone assembly in terms of reaching out, preaching the gospel and uh, we're going to do that. Amen. So you're going to see our faces often times. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't like us after this weekend, may the Lord forgive you because we want to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. Amen. Or if you don't invite us, again, we will invite ourselves. Praise the Lord. Chapter 2 of Colossians. I've, I'm just going to continue. Um, i just um, going to continue from where I ended in terms of um, um, uh, being rooted in Christ, which is um, our scripture verse, which is uh, Colossians chapter 2, as we read it over again, chapter 2, verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and, and established in faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanks giving. Praise the Lord. As you have received him, received him as a person, not only through the teachings that have been handed to you as tradition, which is the word of God, but the person you have received is a person. Praise the Lord. And then Paul admonishes them to say, be rooted in him, be built up in him, and walk in him. Praise the Lord. And, and, and when we look at this book, chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, is the crescendo of what Paul is fully saying as he's writing. In other words, this is the climax and the pith of what is actually wanting to say to them. And this has been centered on the person of Christ. And why is he writing to them? He's writing to them because there are teachings that are going to corrupt and pollute the new believers in Christ and be able to sway them away from the faith and being rooted in Christ. So he's trying to, to warn them. He's trying to warn them. Now as he's trying to warn them, he begins first 
by establishing before them the supremacy of this Christ. In other words, you need to understand what you have received. And once you have fully understood what you have received, then you will know where you stand. And nothing can just sway you away from what you have received. Praise the Lord. The temptation is that we sometimes begin to find Christ as insufficient. And we want to look elsewhere and add something to it so that we can feel complete. But I came to tell you today, you are complete in Christ. I say you are complete in Christ. The Jewish people, Orthodox Jews, when they would ask them, who is the greatest man who ever lived? They will tell you it's Moses. In fact, they could not want to equate Christ with God. It was blasphemy to them. And even up to now, very few Jewish people have embraced Christ and his deity has, as a doctrine they uphold. Moses in the Jewish history is regarded as the greatest man and because of the nature of the man he was and how God used him. He is the man that God uses with a stick, a piece of stick. He points it at the Red Sea. The Red Sea divides. And when it divides, people walk on dry ground. Hello? People walk on dry ground. He smites a rock. Water gushes out and people drink. Hello? This is the man who talked to God Face to face. Hello. The only man when he died, God attended the funeral alone. Can you imagine? You die, God is your undertaker. Nobody is invited. Hello. So, Moses was deemed as the greatest in the history of the Jewish people. Hello. A Jewish man was asked a question. There's a story. There's a joke. A Jewish man is asked... Uh, he's asked, um, the Christian asked him a question. Who do you think was the greatest man in the history of the Jewish people? I'm going to give you a hundred dollar bill. Now the Christian is asking. Then the man looked at the Christian and knew he himself as a Jew, he knew to say the greatest man is Moses. And, and of course the Christian believed it's Christ. So he asked him a question. I'm going to give you a hundred dollar who is the greatest man we ever lived? And the Jewish man says, Jesus Christ. And then he received the hundred dollar bill. Then the Christian was shocked. He said, but you are Jewish. What made you change your mind? He said, I know it is Moses, but business is business. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the, the scripture we're preaching from, there was a group called the Gnostics. The Gnostics had a strange heretical teaching that did not believe that God who is holy can mix himself with the material world and subsequently put 
on human flesh. Because the flesh is material, therefore the flesh is evil. Therefore there is no God who can ever put on human flesh and be God enough to save us. And that's what Paul is dealing with in the church in Colossae. They were preaching that this Christ can never be God because he mixed himself with the flesh and the flesh is evil. Now Paul deals with the first verses of chapter 1 from verse 15. He deals with the supremacy of Christ to authenticate the person of Christ and the power that resides inside of him. That this Christ you have received is no ordinary being but God. And I want you to understand, even you today, the Christ you have received, it is God who came in the human flesh. Hello. Sometimes we need to preach this over and over to people to understand that you have received Christ who is God. Is it allowed to preach here? Or are you still sleeping too? So, On the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus invites Moses. Hello? He invites who? And who else? Supposedly great men of the history of the Jewish people. He invites them to the mountain of the transfiguration and he invites Peter, James and John and on top of the mountain in the presence of Moses and Elijah he was transformed Hello, hello, he was transformed before their very eyes. Somebody says the inside of Christ came out. Hello, God in the very nature, in the human flesh. Before the eyes transformed, metamorphosed, the inner divine dwelling came out. The Bible says his face was like a sun. Hello? 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 Who can look? the sun for one hour. I'm going to give you hundred rounds. One hour. Your eyes open. Hundred dollar bill. Multiply it by 20 or 18. If you work for the Reserve Bank. Clothes he wear, he was wearing, became as white as light. Because he's God and his light, what light touched became light. 
his clothes were as white as light. And the voice was heard from the heavens. The endorsement came from the heavens. The authentication came from the heavens. This is my son. Listen to him. Listen to him. You have it all. Listen to him. On a storm, I came to tell you, listen to him. You have received him, listen to him. You have received him, he's all you need. You've received him, you need no other. You've received him, you are complete in him. You have received him, stand in him. Be rooted in him. Be built up in him. Walk in him. Trust him. Oh, who am I preaching to today? Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. That's what Paul is saying. Just as of you, just as you have received him. Oh, be rooted in him. Look at your neighbor and say, be rooted in him. Don't move to and fro. We've got migrants of Christians who don't understand who they are. Today they are here, tomorrow they are here. Today they are here, tomorrow they are there. How can you be rooted if you are a migrant of a congregant? Look at your neighbor and say, may God forgive you. You need deliverance. You need to meet him. You need to embrace him. Just as you have received Christ. Just as you have received Christ. Uh, walk you in him. Be rooted in him. Be built up in him. Tell your neighbor, I'm going nowhere. I have received him. I'm standing. I'm standing. Come what may. You can toss me to and fro. I will bounce back because I know who I am. I know what I've received. I am buried with him. I am raised with him in the resurrection power of his glory. Paul is going to say to him, it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Look at your neighbor and say, it is Christ in me, the hope of glory. I don't care what comes. I don't care who says so. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. brings me to point number two. Let's go to Colossians chapter two. Chapter two. Are you there? Say amen if you're there. Chapter two, verse 15 to 16. Sorry, chapter 2, sorry. Verse 8, I'm going to begin reading from verse 8. Beware, after he, this is after he has talked about the supremacy of Christ. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. 
verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead boldly. Hello. Paul is trying to say this is a divine being. This is what? A divine being. In him is God in his fullness. When you meet him, you are meeting God himself. He is no lesser being. He is co-equal with God. If you are standing before God himself, what more do you need? And this is where in, I want to conclude with what I'm calling incarnational ministry. If we fail as a church to realize the fullness of Christ in us, we cannot make a difference. There's going to be no impact from the church. And that's why the church is where it is today making literary impact. Because we have not embraced the fullness of what has been given to us. The heritage in Christ. Paul is reminding them to say because the Gnostics or Gnosticism did not believe that God can mix with the material. Therefore, Christ is a lesser being. And every time Christ is compromised, then power that the church should have is compromised. That's why John, Peter, James were invited. Because John especially is going to face this group, the Gnostics. But he begins by saying that which has been talked about from the beginning. And we have heard this we have experienced, we have seen, we have handled, we have touched, and we have behold, I mean, we have beheld the glory. Your rootedness will depend on what you've encountered in Christ. Hello? Hello? If Christ is understood from that lesser perspective point of view, your life will yield the same. Hello? 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 Have you ever heard of are people challenging Christians, they are saying, show us your God. Hello? Show us your God. And if we're going to uh, present Christ to the world in the fullness of his power, in the fullness of his strength, in the glory and the splendor of who he is, we need to understand what you have received. Look at your neighbor and say, I know what I've received. Uh, are you afraid of each other? 
Look at your neighbor and say, I know what I've received. Number three, because of time. Number three, so the, the Gnostic actually <laughs> attacked the divinity of Christ and subsequently they attacked the sufficiency of Christ. Sufficiency of what? Christ. And that's why in verse 10 he even adds by saying you are complete in him. Look at your neighbor and say in him. <laughs> Not anywhere with addition of anything. You are complete in him. <laughs> oh Come what may, I'm complete in him. I'm going nowhere. I am going nowhere. I know what I've received. I know what is due to me. I know my blessing. I know what God can do through Christ Jesus. I am complete in him. Therefore, I'm standing here in what I've received, being rooted. Oh, glory to God. Being rooted in him, being built up in him. Come what may, I'm sinking my roots in him. I'm the champion of the truth. I stand to fall with him, he who is the head over principalities and powers, he who created all things by him, for him, through all things were created by him. All things call him boss. Oh, hallelujah. If you want to question me, don't talk to me. Talk to my boss, talk to my lawyer, talk to he who purchased me by the power of his blood. I'm going nowhere. Come, bring whoever you want to bring. Witches, you can come. Wizards, you can come. I'm standing in the power of his blood. He is my salvation. He is my deliverer. He is the one who watches over me. He who never slumbers. He will see me to the finishing line. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is God. I am standing. I'm going nowhere. After it all, I am standing in the power of his grace. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Tell your enemies, you are standing. You are looking nowhere. God is your God through Christ Jesus. Stand on your feet. It's zero, zero on my side. God bless you. God bless you. Father, ask the senior pastor come. Father, we pray for Cornerstone Assembly. As the senior pastor come, we pray for Cornerstone Assembly. Lord, bless this church. Bless this assembly. May the fullness of Christ dwell in them. In Jesus' name.